Hello, this is Robert, and in this video I would like to review some details about C-string arrays, and I would also like to review um, structs. So what I've done is I've implemented a list using a struct, and you can see my struct right here, and the, the members of my struct are a what looks to be a two-dimensional character array. But in reality, we can think of it as an array of 100 C strings. Then I also have an integer to keep track of how many items are in our list. So this is a two-dimensional character array, but we can use it as a list of 100 C strings. So we have list size as 100, and that's the number of our rows. Each C string is then going to be 256 characters long. So we can set up a collection of C strings just by using a two dimensional array like this. Then we have our prototypes listed. Add an item, and that receives a reference to a list. And then we have print the list, and that also receives a reference to a list, but we want to make sure that our function doesn't change the the list reference so I've put const in, in front of that parameter right there then inside of main I've created an instance of the list called groceries and then I have a choice variable which uh, is going to be used in our switch statement there so that the user can tell us what they would like to do and this is a menu-driven uh, loop right here. So if they choose uh, Q, then this will become false, and that will stop the loop for us. They can choose to add an item by typing A and add an item to the groceries list. They can print the groceries list by choosing P, and then Q will, will quit the program. If they don't choose A, P, or Q, then the default uh, will be selected and they'll just learn that they can't make any other choice. So if they choose any other letter, that's not a valid choice. Let's take a look at our functions now. So we have add an item, and as I said before, it receives a reference to a list struct. And we always want to check to make sure that we don't overflow our arrays when we're when we're creating them with a fixed size and so the list item count can't be larger than uh, 99 basically so if it's if it's greater than or equal to 100 then we have an index out of bounds uh, we would have an index out of bounds if we added anything more to the array and so we just tell them that, sorry, we can't add anything to our array because it's full. Otherwise, we um, tell the, ask them what they would like to add to their groceries list. And then um, we can access the, the struct um, using dot notation. So items is a member of our struct. Let's go back up and see that items is a member of the list struct. And so groceries is a list. And so we can say the list dot items. And then um, we're using the list item count as the index. And notice in main, I set item count equal to zero because when we first created groceries, there were no items in the list. So when it's newly created, there are no items in the list, and so we just set that equal to zero. So the first time we add something to our list, item count is going to be equal to zero. So the index uh, that we're using is going to be zero. So then we output the item that we just added to items inside of the list struct, and then we're going to increment item count. So the next time we add an item, it will actually be added to the array at location 1. So item count is both serving to tell us how many items we have in our list, and it is serving as the index to the array when we add something to the list. Print the list is uh, much simpler. Um, all it does is creates a loop and so we're going to go up to item count and we're, so we're going to list 
uh, I'm sorry, we're going to loop through each item in items, the, the items array right there. Um, but first we're going to check to make sure that the list isn't empty. If, if item count is equal to zero, then we haven't added anything to the list, and so there's no reason to loop through uh, the items. Okay, let's go ahead and test this program just to see how it, how it works. Um, okay, so I'll just start it up and it's going to create our list for us. If I want to print it, um, I can check to make sure that it, um, it's going to tell me that the list is empty, which it does. And then let's go ahead and add a, gro a groceries item to our list, maybe bread. And then if I want to see what's in the list, I can say print. And now we can see that item number one contains bread. I'll add um, eggs to the list and then I'll print. And so now I have two items in the list and then I'll go ahead and quit. And we can, we can see it quit. Um, so this is a little review of how you might create um, a struct in order to, to implement something like a list or, or other kind of, uh, it's almost an object, but it's not quite an object. So in the next video, we're going to convert this to an actual object. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these functions into the struct so that, the, so that add an item and print the list will become members of the, of the struct. And so then we will have an, a real object, not just kind of an, an approximation. The reason why it's not quite an object yet is because print the list and add an item, these are standalone functions they're not encapsulated yet. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to encapsulate, add an item, and print the list.